The Church of Scientology has been battling critics almost from the day it was launched in the early 1950s. But now the attacks are coming not from outsiders, but from former senior insiders, each of whom served the organization for decades. Marty Rathburn spent 27 years in the Church of Scientology. He says he personally saw its leader, David Miscavige, strike subordinates on numerous occasions, including senior colleague Tom DeVocht. Miscavige walks in and goes, asks Tom some question, and there's the slightest lag in his response. Miscavige just takes off across the room in front of 80 people and get delivered a, just a beating to the guy. I mean, beat him up bad. Tom DeVocht, who left the church in 2005 after 28 years, recounted this event to ABC News, saying David Miscavige hit him, knocked him to the ground, and kicked him a number of times. According to Rathburn, Mike Rinder was also a victim of numerous attacks by Miscavige. I saw him attack him while he was sitting in a chair and hitting him upside the head, and then, and, and then wrestling him around the neck and f throwing him to the ground. I saw at least a dozen times this happen. Amy Scobie says she also witnessed Miscavige attack Rinder. Grabbed him around the neck and was throttling, squeezing hard to the point where David's face was shaking and arms were shaking that he was squeezing so hard. Mike Rinder, who left the church in 2007, corroborated these specific incidents and told ABC News he was the victim of repeated acts of random violence at the hands of Miscavige. So I hear his voice booming out in the hallway. Bruce Hines says he himself was physically struck by Miscavige. He said, where is that mother And he just walked up and he hit me on the side of the head. It was a, he didn't have a closed fist, but it was an open hand. But it was, it definitely hurt and it definitely knocked me back. Why didn't you react by hitting back? That would mean um, I had just forfeited my hope for eternity. Your hope for eternity? Yeah, because it's drilled in over and over and over again. The Scientology has the only route to freedom. So he has the power over eternity? Yes. The church provided ABC with more than a dozen affidavits from current Scientologists, including some of the supposed victims, saying allegations that Miscavige struck subordinates are false and ridiculous. He is not a man of violence. Tommy Davis, Scientology spokesman, says these former staffers are bitter and disgruntled liars. Do you not accept that these individuals that have come out in public are making serious allegations about the leader's randomized act of acts of violence mm -hmm. in different settings, in different places to different individuals. Th th these are th the details of these attacks are, are worrying because it's not three people in one room describing one event. These are randomized acts of violence. Well, they're made to seem that way. These are they're not independent. Tom DeVocht has described being personally hit. If he was personally hit, then why in his 20 years of marriage to his wife did he never say anything to her about it? Why did um, Mike Rinder, who was married for 35 years, why has his wife made it very clear that never did he come home with any bruises, any marks, nor did he ever mention ever being attacked by Mr. Miscavige, struck or hit by him? In fact, Mike Rinder to the BBC stated repeatedly allegations of his, his having been physically attacked by Mr. Miscavige are rubbish, 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 rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. Rubbish, rubbish. In 1998, you told the St. Petersburg Times, and I quote, I have never known David Miscavige in 20 years to hit anyone. So, were you lying then, or are you lying now? Then. Why did you speak to newspaper reporters and lie so blatantly? Because, at the time, I perceived that this guy was uh, of the importance that we had to do that. If I told the truth to a newspaper reporter on something like that, I could have been expelled from Scientology forever. Davis says not only has David Miscavige never been violent towards anyone, he says it was in fact Marty Rathbun himself who was the violent one. The only person I know of who was abusive and cruel was Marty Rathbun. 
he was an abusive, cruel, and violent man. I have admitted that I have engaged in stuff. You are the perpetrator of violence yourself within the organization. It wasn't in my nature whatsoever. Rathbun admits that he was violent on many occasions, but says it was because Miss Scavage urged him to be physical, an allegation the church denies. Isn't that an excuse? It's reality. Isn't it easier to blame Mr. Miscavige than take personal responsibility? Easier? No, not at all. He created an environment where he was getting others to do the same. And I broke down and I punched Mike Rinder pretty hard a couple of times. A man you'd known for decades. And a man I'd known for decades. And that's precisely the thing. It made me feel terrible. It made me sick to my stomach. In affidavits provided by the church, Numerous current staff members describe seeing Rathburn attack Rinder and others and call Rathburn psychotic and a bully. Mike Rinder corroborated to ABC News that he was a victim of abuse at the hands of Rathburn. But violence, according to Bruce Hines, wasn't the only tool used to discipline staff. I was assigned to the Rehabilitation Project Force, it's called or generally known as the RPF. The RPF is a disciplinary program for Sea Org members, which Heinz says includes manual labor and intensive counseling. The question they ask, was there an evil purpose or destructive intention that prompted you to commit that overt? After many hours of this, you start to come up with things like, oh, I really, I guess I must really want to destroy mankind. Whew. Think about it. Six years of that was a lot. It is a, a program that um, members of the church's religious order uh, do voluntarily uh, and are given the opportunity to do if um, they're found to have failed in their duties. Bruce Hines says that when he was in the RPF, there were periods of time when he could not see his son. In this case, where the RPF was was also where the school was, and I would get to see him sort of run by in the distance sometimes, and we would kind of wave to each other. But I'm not allowed to actually talk to him. I asked Tommy Davis what the church's current policy is on the RPF and the family. If somebody is married and they're sent to the RPF, mm -hmm. are there controls placed on how much they can see their family? Um, there, there's, there's specific policies which apply to the Rehabilitation Project Force which govern um, how the person doing the program, uh, you know, what they do, what their schedule is. And how much time in a week would an individual be allowed to see their family oh, in the schedule? I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, once a week? Probably, yeah, I would imagine. Once a week would, would, would sounds about right, yeah. Does that sound appropriate? Uh, I, I think so, yeah, sure. During his time in the RPF, Bruce Hines says he received some sad news about his marriage. At that time I was married to another Sea Org member who was not in the RPF and she so decided she wanted to divorce me. This was very, very common. Someone in the RPF, their spouse would divorce them because they were, they would receive pressure to do it. The church says it does not pressure couples to divorce. Bruce Hines left the church in 2003. He and his son, who also left, say they're considered to be suppressive people by the church a Scientology term for antisocial personalities. As a result, they say close family members still in the church are no longer talking to them. Did you lose family members? I have two nieces who live in Clearwater, Florida, who won't talk to me. My sister's former husband, he won't talk to me. And my son, he was born in the Sea Org, he can't speak to his brother or his mother because they refuse it. He's out, he's now left. And because of that, he's suppressive, and so they, they're required to disconnect. Bruce Hines' ex-wife told ABC News she disconnected from him and their son because she didn't want to have anything to do with anyone who lied about her church. Scientology told us they never force anyone to disconnect. Rathbun says that after he saw David Miscavige attack his friend Tom DeVocht, he finally cracked. When we come back, leaving the church.